it's t20 world cup time if you're watching this video on the 3rd of october then you know that the ninth edition of the women's t20 world cup gets underway today we're going to have Bangladesh and Scotland take each other on in the opening fixture of the tournament in Sharjah. In the evening fixture at the same venue, we're going to have Pakistan and Sri Lanka go head to head in getting their campaign started as well. My name is Lavanya and I'm covering the Women's T20 World Cup for Sportstar. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a brief on what happened on match day minus one and what you can look forward to in both of these opening games of the tournament. The opening fixture of the Women's World Cup will see Bangladesh and Scotland, which is making its debut in a World Cup, be it 50 overs or 20 overs. It's an interesting sort of matchup because Bangladesh will, for the only time in this tournament, be the higher ranked side in a fixture. In this clash, we see a very sprightly Scotland that's been punching above its weight for a couple of years now, who bring a very different side of the women's cricket ecosystem into this clash. They still operate in semi-professional situations. You still have people juggling a full-time job on the side and then coming in to play cricket. You still have a unit that doesn't really train together for most parts of the year. So very fascinating storylines coming into play. For Bangladesh, they would have hoped that this match was happening back home because they were all set to host that Women's T20 World Cup, which was coming back to their country after almost a decade. But they've not been able to do that because of some domestic turmoil. So Nigar Sultana Jyoti, when she spoke to the press ahead of this game, uh, spoke about how there's a considerable Bangladesh expat population in Sharjah and she hopes that all of them will turn out in large numbers to support this team. We've seen Bangladesh struggle in T20Is. They've been up against higher ranked opponents like India and Australia in the run-up to this tournament and they've not really registered any results of note per se. They've just been on a losing spree. But there have been positives. Their bowling has looked pretty sprightly. They've always managed to ask tough questions out of the best of the batters in the world. However, that batting department is where the meat is a bit lean for Bangladesh. You have Nigar Sultana Jyoti, who's almost always single-handedly straddling this team along. So that's something that they'll hope to avoid when they take on Scotland in the opening fixture. A win for either side would mean um, an extremely great result in terms of the tournament. Um, but yeah, each side will, of course, have a lot at stake when they go out there and their national anthems are played in the Sharjah Cricket Stadium. The second game of the day is a matchup that I personally really like. It's Pakistan versus Sri Lanka. You've got two very interesting mix of players on both sides. You have a very young captain like Fatima Sana, who's been trusted with the reins of leadership of a team like this that's usually very much under a lot of scrutiny, irrespective of what they manage to do on the cricket field. She's shown a lot of spunk in that captaincy department. She even had a win with this side in the build-up that they had to the World Cup. So very interesting sort of uh, run of events for this Pakistan team. Against a young leader like this, you've got someone like Chamariya Tapatu, who's sort of seen every season change in the Sri Lankan women's game over the last couple of seasons. She's become someone who just straight talks her way about all of the problems facing the women's game, not just in Sri Lanka, but all over the world. Given that this is a replay of the semi-final of the Women's Asia Cup, and we saw how close that game went, uh, we'd hope for the same kind of cricket in the Sharjah International Cricket Stadium. But one would assume that Sri Lanka, which is on some sort of high right now after a brilliant 16 months where they've really taken the fight to several higher ranking opponents. They've registered their maiden Asia Cup win. And they have this imperious leader who's infused the team with a lot of self-belief. You'd expect a side like that to enter this fixture as the favourite. Before all of this, on match day eve, we had a very interesting Captain's Day event where all 10 captains of the participating teams were brought together for a panel discussion led by Australian cricketer on broadcaster Mel Jones. This was very interesting. Um, although they came out, all 10 of them came out and sat for this presser at around 1 in the afternoon, they had spent better part of the entire morning at the Dubai International Cricket Stadium. Warm-ups are done, all the preparations done, all the last-minute tinkering, at least against other teams, were done. And all of the women in the sides were actually taking a day off. Some were visiting water parks, some were roaming around and checking out the sites in Dubai. But the captains were hauled out of their hotel rooms early in the morning to come into the Dubai International Cricket Stadium for a very fancy photo shoot, which involved a couple of peregrine falcons, two camels. Um, there was a lot of sunglasses and bats and balls going around for a really, really swanky photo shoot. I'm sure as you're hearing this, you'll see a photo pop up on your screen. 
very interesting i i'm sure we'll maybe ask uh, the <laughs> captains what really went behind who would you know sport the falcon who would be on top of the camel there's a lot of bts footage coming out from the icc so do make sure to check that out as well for some sufficient comic relief but after all of that light work in the morning the captain sat down for some very serious discussions about the state of the women's game and what direction the women's game should take going forward with the t20 world cup now being a very good starting point for those conversations very interestingly i think there were about 3 to 4 big talking points from this event for us number one the fact that franchisee cricket has become such an overarching conversation to have in international women's cricket i think is just telling us how far the game has come maybe in the last 2 to 3 years especially after we've had an experience like the covid-19 pandemic it's only grown strength to strength after it's come back full stretch so we had a lot of conversations about balancing the international game with franchisee cricket because there would obviously be this lure for players to move into just playing league cricket because the money and the opportunities there are better so heather knight was very very passionate in speaking about how there needs to be lessons learned from how the women's game is going at the moment you have a packed calendar you have a lot of conversations about what cricket people are prioritizing about losing international players to franchisee cricket those were very interesting points that were raised by the england captain when she said we should get ahead of the curve a little bit when we know that the women's game is just starting to take that arc upwards right this line of conversation was all the more important given that harman preet kaur had spoken about bringing in more test cricket for teams outside of the big 3 um and you also have things like the champions trophy coming back which would mean additional fixtures right for the international calendar so finding that sort of balance would be very key is something that heather knight and a bunch of other captains also agreed with another thing that the captains came together and vouched for quite unanimously was the widening of the t20 world cup playing pool so you'd see we know that we're going to be having two more teams uh, you know added to the roster in the next edition and you have the pool widening to 16 in the 2030 edition so that's something that's actually happening we also have the prize money uh, evened out in this edition so the winner of this tournament and the winner of the men's tournament earlier this year will receive the same prize money as we know the money is also increased for some of the participating teams in this tournament which is also very very important because just because you finished last doesn't mean you walk away having lost any resources monetarily so that these have been some very important discussions that have been held i quite liked how scotland's catherine rice vouched for papua new guinea uh, they have been doing some interesting work if you look outside the full members and outside the major mainstream women's teams that usually play each other you have some really sprightly sides like papua new guinea Uh, Thailand which of course was part of the world cup fold in uh, a couple of years ago you have teams like Malaysia um, even UAE even though they have not managed to make it they have not qualified for this tournament they have also been making some strides in terms of bolstering their cricketing environment so if you have these teams come out and play the bigger sides regularly that would be something that would really strengthen the women's cricket ecosystem sophie divine spoke about maybe having a promotion relegation second tier which would mean the smaller sides get to play against bigger sides a little more often i thought that was extremely interesting to sort of make the entire ecosystem more competitive and not just the top creamy layer that we end up seeing at all of these world tournaments regularly the third part from this captain's day that really interested me was the ghost of meg lanning meg lanning's been such an important part of the legacy of the women's t20 world cup as a tournament she's uh, she's led australia to five titles in this tournament so it was natural that elisa healy would be sort of bombarded with questions about you know what her legacy is does she feel pressure coming into the tournament after you know meg having done all of these things for australia i might be reading a little too much into it but i felt uh, elisa healy's wit was like at its peak maybe when she was addressing these things she did say when someone asked her in the presser about what the winning formula for australia is and how they've continuously managed to be successful she did cheekily say that you know meg's written it down on a paper and passed it on to her and she can't share it with the rest of us but all of that aside i thought it was really important that she underlined the fact that she's brought her own sort of style into the way this team is run she's not meg lanning she's alisa healy this were her words and she spoke about how there is of course you don't come into a t20 world cup trying to defend a title you come there to win the title and all of the teams that have come there have really earned their right to be in that playing pool what she says sort of also alludes to the fact that we've been talking about this edition as being one of the most competitive editions ever you of course do have underdog sides like a scotland or a bangladesh or a pakistan who have had either their setups are not you know full fledged enough for them to really punch 
on that level or you've had a really rocky run up to the tournament itself and they will be hoping to iron out some of those creases along the way but you also have sides like england new zealand australia india sri lanka now uh, west indies who are really coming together and figuring out a way where they can be contenders and directly approach that knockouts as straightforwardly as possible so it's pretty interesting to sort of get these kind of insights from the captains ahead of a tournament like this which is pretty wide open if you look at the competitive pools you can of course check out all of what the captains spoke about in a story that we've done on sportstar i'll probably drop the link for you in the show notes of this video interesting comments from the players but the time for talking is done starting today we get down into the cricket fields and we see what all of these teams have to offer in terms of their cricket as the tournament officially gets underway you can catch all of the updates from the women's t20 world cup right here i will try and update you guys as much as possible you can also check out sports star social media handles and the website for all the information you need we will have some exclusive interviews coming out as well so please make sure you keep watching our space and support our coverage and enjoy the tournament